Hello and uh, welcome back. So in today's lesson, uh, we're going to learn about uh, what's called the Thevenin equivalent. Uh, so in our last lesson, we looked at how to create the IV characteristic for uh, any linear uh, network. And so here's a linear network inside this box. And we looked at the I and B um, characteristic, the IV characteristic at this port or at these two terminals. And uh, for the Thevenin equivalent, we're going to focus on uh, it being a source. And uh, so, it, as we talked about before, when we find our equivalent circuits, we want them to be the simplest that we possibly can. And so we looked at the simple circuit of just one resistor when we're looking at a load equivalent. And for a source equivalent, uh, we have to have a source in there. So one way that we can represent this is in this structure right here, so this configuration. So the Thevenin equivalent has one voltage source, which we call V Thevenin, and we can find the value of that. And then we have one series resistor, R Thevenin, and then we have our port. And so this is really simple, and so we want to take whatever's inside here and find out the values of V Thevenin and R Thevenin that will give us the exact same IV characteristic. And so then at this port, these two terminals, um, anything we connect to it will, will give us the same coordinates of I and V that the original network would, would have done. And, uh, and so then when we're doing our analysis, it's much easier to look at this and we can attach different loads on here then and use this instead of the original network and, uh, and then we can do quick solutions for that. And so that's the purpose of the Thevenin equivalent here. Uh, so just a little review, we looked at the source IV characteristic from last time and we found that uh, the line, the load line, or the IV characteristic was given by this equation, that the current is equal to, if we find on this uh, port, the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage, and the current is the ratio of those two uh, with a minus sign in there giving us our negative slope multiplied by V and then our y-intercept was just the short circuit current. And so that created a graph that looks like this. We chose the two points to find uh, the short circuit current when we shorted the circuit and solved it, and then the open circuit voltage when we opened the circuit and solved it, um, and that gives us our two intercepts. The open circuit is our uh, x-intercept and the short circuit current is our y-intercept. And then using that, we found that the slope of the line must be ISC, uh, over VOC and it's negative and so there we have it so that's the IV characteristic so we're gonna try to match that IV characteristic um, with this network with just a Thevenin source voltage source and a Thevenin uh, series resistance okay uh, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, just go ahead and go through the method of solving for an IV characteristic using this uh, uh, circuit and so first we're gonna do an open circuit and solve for our I and V, and uh, then we're gonna do a short circuit and then solve for our I and V, um, and, uh, and then see how that relates to, the, to these two values. So here is our open circuit configuration. So it's open. I have my current leaving, uh, signif uh, signifying that it's a source, and then we have our voltage across those two terminals. Uh, I'm going to short, or sorry, ground uh, this uh, node at the bottom here so that it has zero volts. And then we have node B here, which is an easy solution uh, that the voltage is going to be the V Thevenin, whatever the value of that source is. And then we have our C terminal um, node, which is on that top uh, terminal. And so we don't know its value at this point. Uh, when we solve an open circuit, we know there's no current flowing because it is open, so that was an easy solution we've found before, and we wanna look at what that open circuit, um, sorry, the open circuit voltage is. And so if we look at the open circuit voltage, it's VC minus uh, VA. Uh, and so um, one thing that we can kind of see here is uh, that we, we don't know what the C voltages just yet so we can write an expression for KCL and that's right over here so the current uh, all the currents leaving this node and there's only one direction here it's back towards B uh, must be equal, equal to zero so VC minus VB over RTH is equal to zero and so that's shown right here and then if I substitute in RTH times zero is just zero and VC um, 
if we add VB to both sides, we got VC equals VB. And so VB we already knew was the Thevenin voltage. So the Thevenin voltage um, is equal to VB and is equal to VC. And so the open circuit voltage then is VC minus VA, which is just the V Thevenin minus zero. So the open circuit voltage is V Thevenin. So that's really pretty simple. So solving the open circuit uh, problem, we find that whatever open circuit voltage we get is gonna be equal to V Thevenin that's going to be in our, our circuit when we uh, simplify it. Okay, um, great. So then looking at the short circuit. So I shorted my circuit. I've selected my nodes. We have a big A node, which is grounded. So that's zero volts. And then we just have B node, which is V7. So we look across the output here and the short circuit uh, voltage is zero. We don't really need that. We don't need the short uh, open circuit current. We don't need the short circuit voltage. We're looking for open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. So what is the uh, expression for the short circuit current? Well, the current that's flowing into this node is just the current that's flowing across our Thevenin. So we have um, V Thevenin minus zero over R Thevenin, or VB minus uh, VA over RTH right there. And so VA is zero, VB is V Thevenin. And so we get this expression that the short circuit current or the Thevenin equivalent is going to be V Thevenin over R Thevenin. Uh, so what do these two uh, equations tell us then? Well, if we, we're really looking for the V Thevenin and R Thevenin, we want to know what those values are. So if we find the open circuit voltage uh, for our network, that's going to be equal to the V Thevenin. So here in summary, V Thevenin is just going to be the open circuit voltage. And then what is the value of R Thevenin? So if I rearrange this equation, we can see that R Thevenin here is going to be, uh, as we kind of cross multiply these two, R Thevenin is going to be V Thevenin over ISC. Um, and then one more substitution, since we're looking for R Thevenin in terms of open circuit and short circuit current, since V Thevenin is V open circuit, um, I just make that substitution there and we see R Thevenin is the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. So we have two expressions now to allow us to find the two values uh, that we're looking for in our equivalent circuit. V Thevenin is open circuit voltage, R Thevenin is open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna write here the expression from above. This is our general solution for a source for um, the characteristic equation. And then if I substitute in uh, negative ISC over VOC, uh, I can see that negative ISC is negative V Thevenin over R Thevenin right there. And VOC, we just said is V Thevenin, so I substitute it in right there. And I put it over one so that we can do um, this complex uh, fraction, multiply by the reciprocal of this denominator. And if I do that, the V Thevenins cancel out and we can see that uh, this is equal to negative one over R Thevenin. And so the slope of our characteristic equation uh, becomes negative one over R Thevenin. And that makes sense because this term is always going to be a conductance. So one over a resistance is a conductance there. And then ISC, we already have an expression for it. It's VTH over RTH. And so we have um, just substitute that in into ISC. So this becomes the general form for a Thevenin characteristic equation. If I know R Thevenin, I know V Thevenin, then I can write the characteristic equation just like that. So pretty straightforward there. And so then to put this on a graph, we have our two uh, intercepts and uh, we know this is an open circuit voltage and for a Thevenin equivalent, that's equal to V Thevenin. That's the short circuit current and for a Thevenin equivalent, that's V Thevenin over R Thevenin. And then our slope is just one over the Thevenin resistance and it's a negative slope. So that's the uh, general solution, the basics of what an Thevenin equivalent, how we match it up to a general source uh, IV characteristic. All right, so how do we actually use that? So that might seem a little uh, difficult to understand just from a theory point of view, but let's do an example and I think it'll become a little bit more clear. So we wanna turn this source network into a Thevenin equivalent, something easy to work with. And 
Uh, so what are, what are the steps involved in this? Well, the, the first thing I'm gonna do is find ISC and VOC. This is what we would do if we were just trying to find the IV characteristic of this source anyway, so we can just find those. And then we're gonna use our equations to find the Thevenin voltage and Thevenin resistance. And the Thevenin voltage is VOC, the open circuit voltage. Thevenin resistance is just VOC over ISC. So let's start with the open circuit solution. And so I leave my uh, port open. I'm gonna ground this bottom node here, and then we have the V node is 30 volts, and the C node we don't know, and the D node we don't know. And I've listed my voltage, node voltages, uh, so that we can kind of tabulate and use those uh, after we're done with our solution. So the easy ones, A node is zero, because I defined it that way. We have a source here that gives us a voltage at B of 30 volts, so those two are done. And so we're just solving for C and D, and to do that, I'm gonna do KCL. So the expression for C is uh, VC minus VB over 20. And then we have uh, three amps coming in, so that's a minus three, because we're looking at solving going out. And then we have VC minus VD over 10. And so set that all equal to zero. At D, we only have one exit, and that's through the 10 ohms. So VD minus VC uh, over 10 is equal to zero. VD minus VC over 10 is equal to zero. One thing you might recognize here is that this branch doesn't actually complete any loop. And so the current through the town resistor must be zero here. And we can see that when we uh, solve this, that uh, uh, multiplying zero by 10 is zero, and then VD minus VC equals zero. So that just tells us that VD is equal to VC. So if these two nodes have the same voltage, then there is no current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor. So that makes sense. I did it in a long form here, just so you can see the method. But if you recognize that, you can kind of shortcut that and say, oh, these are the same voltage right here. Uh, so then I substitute back in for VD as VC, and then I replace VB with the known 30 volts, and then we get this equation. So VC minus 30 over 20 minus 3 plus VC minus VC over 10, that whole term goes to 0. And so we have VC minus 30 over 20 minus 3 equals 0. Multiply both sides by 20, and so we got VC minus 30, and then the minus 3 bring to the other side uh, to multiplied by 20 is equal to 60. So we got VC is equal to 90 volts. So 90 volts for VC, and then since VD and VC are the same, 90 volts for D VD. Okay, so that's our solution for all the node voltages. Now we wanna know what is the open circuit voltage. The open circuit voltage here is just VD minus VA, and so that's 90 minus zero or 90 volts. So we found the open circuit voltage, part one of our solution here. Great, 90 volts. Second uh, thing we're gonna do is solve this short circuit. And so here I've drawn it, uh, the circuit again. It's uh, with a short at the port and uh, labeled everything short circuit current, short circuit voltage. Uh, I have my bottom node actually connecting all the way up across to the top uh, terminal. And that's gonna be zero volts. We have node B solved easy, 30 volts. And the only one we don't know is node C. Uh, so zero, 30, what is node C? I'm gonna use KCL. VC minus VB over 20, minus three coming in, so uh, uh, minus three going out since we've got three coming in, then VC minus VA over 10. So those three current terms must be equal to zero. And then if we solve this algebraically, we get that VC is 30 volts. Um, and so that's the node voltage at VC. So then we wanna find that short, short circuit current uh, we don't care about the short circuit voltage because we know it's just zero. Uh, so what is the short circuit current? It's the current flowing through that 10 ohm resistor. So it's gonna be VC minus VA over 10. VC minus VA over 10 is 30 over 10. And so that's three amps. So our short circuit current is three amps. So we have our open circuit current from the last problem, which is 90 volts. Our short circuit, uh, sorry, open circuit voltage is 90 volts. Our short circuit current is three amps. So now we can put it into the general uh, characteristic equation. This is the general form. I is negative ISC over VOC times V plus ISC. It gives us I is, if we do that division there, we get negative 0.03 repeating Siemens, because it's a conductance, multiplied by voltage plus our three amps. All right, so we've 
done the first part. Step two is to find the Thevenin voltage. So for this characteristic equation, the Thevenin voltage is just gonna be equal to the open circuit voltage. So we already found that this is 90 volts. And then our equation for the Thevenin resistance is the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. So that's 90 volts over three amps, and that gives us 30 ohms. And so there's our R Thevenin. R Thevenin, 30 ohms, open circuit, or sorry, V Thevenin, 90 volts. And so if I were to draw the Thevenin equivalent now, uh, we have our source, 90 volts, our resistor, 30, volt, 30 ohms. And so this Thevenin equivalent is going to give us the exact same uh, performance as our original source network. And so we found it. Uh, just to show you here that both have the same IV characteristic, if I use the equation that we found for the Thevenin characteristic, it was I is negative one over RTH times the voltage plus VTH over RTH. So one over 30 gives me 0.03 repeating. So that's uh, the slope right there. And then VTH over RTH is just 90 over 30, which gives me three. And so we have the same exact characteristic as the general form using our Thevenin uh, form. And so that means that these are exactly the same in terms of their performance. So that indeed acts the same as the original circuit. So there you have it. That's how we solve for the Thevenin equivalent. I want to show you one more alternative method for finding RTH. So in this method, you still have to use the open circuit solution to find V Thevenin, but you don't have to do the short circuit uh, solution to find R Thevenin. So instead, we're going to do it directly from uh, the circuit. So this method involves um, turning off all the sources. So if we if we get rid of all the sources in our source network, um, then whatever resistance we see looking into the network is going to be our Thevenin equivalent resistance. Um, and so how do you turn off the sources? Well, if you turn off a voltage source, you shouldn't have any difference in voltage between the two sides of the voltage source. So this voltage and that voltage, those two nodes should have the same voltage. So how do you make sure that those two nodes have the same voltage? Well, you connect them together, so you short it. So you have to short the voltage sources. If you don't want a current source, uh, then you have to make sure that the, the um, current between the two sides of the source is zero. So you don't want any current flowing through here. How do you make sure there's no current flowing through here? Well, you just open up that circuit. So you open current sources and you short voltage sources and then you solve for the equivalent resistance looking in. So I'm gonna turn this voltage source into a short and I'm gonna turn this current source into an open and then I'm gonna look into these, uh, this port. So basically find the resistance between this terminal and that terminal. Uh, and so if I do that, I can see this actually turns into a really simple series circuit where the resistances are 10 and 20, add them together, we get 30 ohms, and that's our Thevenin resistance, exactly the same Thevenin resistance that we found using the other method. So both methods are valid uh, to find that solution. Okay, thanks for watching.